Are you afraid of falling upside down, rope born and hitting your head against the wall? This is a proper risk when lead climbing and unfortunately not many instructors teach you how not to fall upside down, especially when climbing on traverses. But no worries for I, actually David, am here. In this video I will give you a bit of theory and a demonstration about how to prevent this uh, situation. Of course, this is the kind of risk that you want to mitigate at all costs, so you will never do falling practice upside down. Let's start by debunking some myths. So we've got a climber here and they're obviously leading up past bolts and what they're going to do is make some deliberate mistakes but also show how to uh, manage the rope so it doesn't end up going behind your leg. Myth number one. It's possible to fall upside down when you are over the quick draw. This is false. It's possible to fall upside down even when getting entangled with the rope between the two quick draws. What I'm doing here is demonstrating what's, what's happening. You can clearly see the quick draw and the bolt um, below my left foot. And because my foot is um, directly above the bolt, and I haven't pushed the rope away, as soon as I move my body, it's my body that takes the rope um, behind my leg. And that's the part of the problem, is that you, it seems okay when you place your foot on the hold, but as soon as you move your body, then you're, you, the rope travels with it, and then it ends up behind your leg. Myth number two, you fall upside down only when you have your leg or your foot between the rope and the wall. And this is false for two main reasons. The first one is that of course you, there is a very high chance of falling upside down if you have the whole foot or the whole leg between the rope and the wall, but it's possible to fall upside down even when you have just a little part of your foot and especially in some spe specific cases it's possible to fall upside down even when your foot and your leg is far away from the rope and of course i will tackle this situation specifically later i've gone around the outside of the rope so i've gone around the outside of the rope kept the rope between me my legs and the cliff myth number three to avoid falling upside down you should have the feet on both sides of the rope and this is also false. This applies only when you have a vertical route and you're going straight up. But especially in the case of traverses, this is probably the best way to fall upside down. So how do we prevent this problem? In reality, the trick is easy. You have to pay attention to your heels. You should think, if I were to fall straight down, where would my heels be? Because it's actually usually the heels that get hooked into the rope and make you tilt upside down. So if you're climbing on a vertical route and you have the feet on either side of the rope, then the fall will be straight down and your heels will encounter basically nothing. But if you are traversing and you keep the feet on both sides of the rope, then Falling straight down will mean that your heel will probably encounter the rope and you will fall upside down unless the root is very overhanging. So what we do instead is to lift the rope with the foot, which means that if you do that, you will have the foot in between the rope and the wall, which is the example that I was telling you before. It's a myth. Actually, sometimes having the foot between the rope and the wall is the best way to prevent falling upside down. That was it for the theory. Now let's make a small test so that you can be sure that you understood how to manage the rope while you're climbing on lead. All right, so if we're pretending that, you're, uh, that you've climbed this from the, from the ground and you've clipped in, these are your last two clips, I'm delaying you from here. How would you step on the brown one? In a safe way? Yes, definitely. Since you're underneath the rope, the rope won't be a problem. So it's all about where the rope is in relation to you. How would you step on the um, on this white one? Yes, exactly. You wouldn't want to step on top because if you slide off, you'll hit the rope. Uh, and your foot might get caught and then you'll end up upside down, possibly. How about this one? Because I'm, I'm down here belaying you. Yes, exactly. Very good. 
And the blue one? Oh, this is high step. Yes. Yes, definitely. Oh yeah, let's do it wrong once. <laughs> How would you wrongly step on the blue one? What would be a bad idea? Yes, exactly. And this white one, what would be the worst way of doing that? Worst ever? Yeah, we're sure. <laughs> no? That's pretty safe. Yeah, that would be the worst because you'll end up here. You'll get caught in the rope and the, and the quick draw. There you would be fairly safe depending on where I am. If I'm, if I'm far to the side, like if I'm over here, then it would be more dangerous. But if I'm over here, it's pretty fine because you'll, you'll always fall straight down if you slip. Now it's time to practice on the wall the proper body positioning. Try to go up on a traversing route and over exaggerate the movements of pushing away the rope so that you can minimize and approach to zero the probability of falling upside down. And that was it. Now you're minimizing the risk of injuries when lead climbing and this should decrease your level of anxiety because you're controlling another factor. I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.